this should break off so many things when it comes to the word. It is written. God does not even have the ability to lie in him. That is the truth. Do you know how wild that is? Hello, today we are studying the character of God. For God is light, God is love, and God is good. And we are doing a test to see if you secretly think that God is evil. Let's get to the show. So we are starting off with this one understanding that the devil is trying to do the same thing that he did in the Garden of Eden before to us now, trying to accuse God of being evil. And so this comes from Genesis um, chapter three, and it says in verse one, now the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field which the Lord had made. And he said unto the woman, yea, have God said, ye shall not eat of every tree of the garden? And the woman said unto the serpent, we may eat of every tree of the garden, the fruit of the tree, which is in the midst of the garden. God hath said, ye shall not eat of it, neither shall ye touch it, lest ye die. And the serpent said unto the woman, ye shall not surely die, for God doth know that in that day, ye eat thereof, then your eyes shall be opened and ye shall be gods, knowing good and evil. And when the woman saw that the tree was good for food and that it was pleasant to the eye and a tree to be desired to make one wise, she took of it, took of the fruit thereof and did eat and gave also unto her husband with her and he did eat. So, so no, it's the same situation now that it was then that the devil is putting God's character on trial. <clears throat> but I have scriptures here to show that God is good, God is love, and God is only. And this comes from James 1 and 17. Every, James 1 and 17. Every good gift and every perfect gift is from above and cometh down from the Father of lights with whom is no variableness nor shadow of turning. First John 1 and 5. This then is the message which we have heard of him and declare unto you that God is light and in him is no darkness at all. Numbers 23, 19. God's not a man that he should lie, neither the son of man that he should repent. Hath he said, and shall he not do it? And doth and or hath he or hath he spoken and shall he not make it good shall god not also perform it so this is the test and examples of whether or not you think that god is evil he has some darkness in him or he has some ways that he's changed he's not the same today yesterday and forevermore so examples if we secretly think that god is evil or God can lie, or there's some type of variableness or variation in him that he can change. Number one, <coughs> the Bible says that you shall lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. But I have prayed for people and they have either died or they did not recover. So now when I pray, I think it may or may not happen. Or when I pray now, I make disclaimers like healing may be progressive, or you'll get healed in heaven because that's our ultimate healing. It is true, but it's unbelief. Or I have stopped praying for healing altogether, right? So there is some discrepancy in my heart when it comes to the scripture. The scripture says this, but my behavior and actions and my belief of it says another things. Boom. I don't think the scriptures are the inspired word of God for John 1, 1 says, and again, was the word, the word was with God, the word was God. So I don't believe because I think there is some difference. And number two, it says that God will withhold no good thing from us. But I think that I am called to singleness, even though I want to be married. <clears throat> Or you are afraid that God will have you marry someone you don't want to be with. Or you read the book of Job or the story of Joseph and think that there's some type of evil or darkness within God. Or number three, 
You read stories like the book of Job or the story of Joseph and think that God has some type of darkness in him or evil in him where he will take your belongings or punish you, punish you by making you poor or having bad stuff come unto you. So whenever anything bad happens in your life or in your body, you think God is punishing you for your sin or not having a pure heart or anything else. So I want you to note the, so I want you to pinpoint and note the core feeling of all of these emotions. It's fear, right? And there's fear that somehow there's darkness in God, that he's not pure, he's not holy, he's not light, he's not good, but there's some type of evil in him. And our circumstances, the world around us, and so on and so forth, prove this to be true. And the scriptures are not showcasing the reality that we're living in, right? But the scriptures say that fear torment, but in perfected love, there is no torment. There is no fear. So two things that happen uh, when it comes to believing the character of God, but also believing the scriptures and just like your circumstances and so on and so forth is the love of God. So this is twofold. The love of God has not been revealed unto us um, in its fullness. In short, uh, it always comes down to usually um, rejection or a works-based faith, right? Where I am afraid that if I don't have some type of self-preservation, God will not protect me. He will not um, take care of me. He is not a good father that knows how to take care of his children. So I have to protect myself, right? And so I don't know the love of God because I don't know that he He is good. He is a good father. He knows how to take care of us. He knows his perfect will and we're not alone. He, he never forsakes us. And so I can never love or know the love of God if I don't trust him. Right. And so that's the same seed that Satan put in the Garden of Eden um, that God cannot be trusted. <laughs> I can't. You cannot love God because you cannot trust him. And so this is how fear sets in. This is how rejection sets in. That I think that the evil human behaviors that I see in other people um, or the evil not human behaviors that people are, are being under the influence of the devil and these demons operating as angels masking themselves as angels of light, that somehow these characters are in God, right? And, or there's just a sovereignty of the Lord that, hey, God is over everything. He's in control of everything. Um, at any time, he could stop this, right? Why is he not? And these type of questions and doubt that are from the enemy, we just have to know that it breeds unbelief and it breeds an evil heart towards the Lord, right? We wouldn't say this out loud, but <laughs> in short, it's just the truth that somehow we see like people being poor or sick or dying and all this bad suffering happening. And we think like, hey, God, there must be some discrepancy here because you're not doing anything, right? And I just want to, God doesn't need to be defended, but I do want to say um, towards this that God is good. There's no evil in him. Um, but we need to see first and foremost, right, is Romans 8. It says that all creation um, waits for the manifestation of the sons of God groaning in travail, right? And so what that means is that when the first Adam sinned, right, we all fell under the rule of the kingdom of darkness, being the devil, right? Being the prince of the air, the ruler of this world, right? Where he was kicked out of heaven, boom. And now here we are on earth <laughs> waiting for the Lord and his um, good promise. And so this is Second Peter 3 and 9. The Lord is not slack as some men count slackness concerning his promise, but long suffering towards us, not willing that any should perish, but all come to repentance. So it says that Jesus being the last Adam, not the second Adam, but the final Adam, right, um, gave himself 
for the world and for those that he loved. He died for us while um, we were yet sinners, right? That all should come to repentance. The Lord in his sovereignty, knowing all things, being omniscient, no, um, and even um, omnipresent, giving himself the word becoming flesh, um, Jesus bearing on the cross the iniquity, the sin and the transgressions of us all was perfect, lived a sinless life. And through his blood, um, we are cleansed from all iniquity, all transgression, all sin. And we are resurrected with him in the power of his resurrection. So what this means is that Jesus even suffered. <laughs> and he is a good friend. It's like, hey, even um, some may die um, for a just man or a just woman um, or a righteous person, how much more is it unlikely that someone will die for evil people? And that's who we are. <laughs> we sin willfully a lot. And the Lord in his love died for us still, still. And so that's why he's saying like, hey, everybody can come to repentance. Murderers, idolaters, fornicators, people having sex outside of marriage, um, the homosexual, uh, any evil person, liars, um, people that do zodiac signs, witchcraft, Islam, Buddhism, Hinduism, atheists, agnostic, they can all come into the love of God if they receive Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior. So right now, it says from the foundations of the earth, Jesus was the atonement plan to ensure pay the price on the cross that we deserve. It says the wages of sin is death. We are worthy to go to hell. But Jesus is our <laughs> defense lawyer. He's the one that advocates for us because the devil is an accuser of the brethren, right? And so we have to live this life knowing that God was perfect. He had no sin in him. And he also suffered he suffered the most cruel type of death on the cross with his beating, his crucifixion, through his stripes, we are healed. And so it says, if we suffer with him, we also reign with him. So everybody is under, in short, this bondage to the earth and all this suffering until, right, we come into um, Christ, right? And it says like, hey, you can either suffer for righteousness or suffer for unrighteousness, but it's better to be in Christ suffering because if you suffer with him, you'll reign with him. And so those scriptures I listed out earlier, these are the scriptures that must ground us to know that God is love, God is good, and God is only light. There is no darkness in him. There is no evil way in him. And so with the fall of man, know that everything that's happening is the devil. <laughs> like, <laughs> um, that is another tactic. We have to know the wiles of the, de the devil, the methods of the devil. And one of them is number one, he's an accuser of the brethren. So he convict, he tempts you to sin and then he accuses you like, look, they're sinning, they're sinning. <laughs> they deserve judgment. <laughs> they deserve to go to hell with me. And so on um, the it says in John 16 that the prince of the, um, the Holy Spirit um, convicts the world of sin, of righteousness, and of judgment. The third is judgment because the devil has already been judged. Him, him and his angels and also the demons are all going to hell. And so he's convincing you to sin by tempting you so you go to hell with him. But we can't operate under this system because if we receive his Holy Spirit being sealed with the salvation of Jesus Christ, then boom, we are no longer in the system of the kingdom of darkness, but move into his marvelous light. We being the lights of the world. And so we have to war a good spiritual warfare. It says, submit to God, obey the commandments, obey what the Bible says, resist the devil, right? It's a fight. It's it is a battle. We don't um, battle against flesh and blood, but rulers, principalities, spiritual weaknesses in dark, uh, high places and um, spiritual darknesses in high places. Like, you know, we live in this natural world, but there's a 
There's stuff happening in the second heaven and um, so on and so forth. So we need to know this is what our warfare is. And we have to continue to pray, continue to press, continue to fast. Right. Um, knowing that the Lord in Matthew 28 has given us all power um, over every power um, through Christ Jesus. It is the name of Jesus that we're able to do anything. All right. So I just want scriptures as reminders that God is good. God is light. God is love. There's no evil in him. There's no shadow turning or darkness or variation. He's the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. So Romans 8, 32, he that spared not his own son, but delivered him up for us all. How shall he not with him also freely give us all things? So it's like when we pray and we are like, man, the Lord, he's not giving me a spouse. He's not giving me a job. He's just allowing me to be poor. He's not allowing me um, to be healed. It says, if Jesus was freely given, how much more would he not also give us all things freely, right? And that scripture that should ground you for the rest of your life is, it is finished. The finished work of Jesus on the cross, he has given us the pleasure of the kingdom. All this is available to us. All of this is ours, right? Um, Psalms 84 verse 11. For the Lord God is a sun and a shield. The Lord will grace and um, the Lord will grace and glory. No good thing will he withhold from them that walk uprightly. And so it says like, hey, he will withhold no good thing. So if I am somehow not receiving it, right? Number one, it's probably the devil. <laughs> I need to war a good warfare. I need to fast and pray, rebuke, bind, loose, all the things that the Bible instructs, cast out. <laughs> and also, um, if I don't receive, maybe it's not good. Like <laughs> Maybe it is the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eye, the pride of life, where James 1 says, um, you have not because you ask not, but also says you ask and you not receive because you ask amiss try and consume of your own lust, right? So this is like a cheat sheet of how to get all your prayers answered. Um, God does not answer lust. He answers glory, right? How will, if you, yo, if you want a house or you want a car or you want money or you want a wife or a husband or something, just pray, Lord, I, w- I would like a, a, a wife to bring you glory. I want a family to bring you glory. I will want... Um, healing and to move in any of these things for your glory, for your kingdom to be established in the earth, right? This is how I move out of lust and move out out into the love of God, into abiding in him. Because um, if I'm not in him, I can do nothing of myself. But like, hey, you just ask him, just literally just ask Jesus in Jesus name, whatever. And then boom, he'll just give it. All right. Luke 12 and 22. Oh, Luke 12 and 32, fear not little children for it's your father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. Like Jesus was perfect. Like, and he gave him freely. Could you imagine, uh, have, we'll just say God is so much worth more than mammon and money. But if Jesus was worth a billion dollars and he gave it to the world, to us, us evil sinners, we were so evil. And he was just like, Hey, here it is. Right. And he's saying like, how much more This precious gift, this very valuable thing of his only begotten son, Jesus being God himself, gave himself to you. (laughs) How much more will he not give you all of the kingdom? This is the mentality that Jesus, God, the Holy Spirit is trying to teach to us of like, God is not evil that he doesn't give good gifts to us, right? And so this comes from Matthew 7 and 7. Ask and it shall be given unto you. Seek and you shall find. Knock and it shall be opened unto you. For every one that asketh receiveth, and he that um, seeketh findeth. And to him that knocketh it shall be opened. Or what man is there of you, whom if his son ask bread, will he give him a stone? Or if he ask a fish, will he give him a serpent? If he then if ye then being evil know how to give good gifts unto your children, how much more shall your father, which is in heaven, give good things to them that ask him? So look at the parallel and the um, contrast in this juxtaposition. 
you're human and you're evil and you know how to give good gifts to your children. How much more I being God, being perfect, being love, being good, being light, know how to give good things to them who ask. Right. You see that little contingency who ask, ask in the name of Jesus. So the reason that the Lord's putting this there, he's trying to showcase like, hey, y'all are evil. and You do this stuff. Do not project human capabilities unto me being God. It says God is not um, the son of man that he should repent, neither uh, man that he should lie. Right. God is this should break off so many things when it comes to the word. It is written. God does not even have the ability to lie in him. That is the truth. Do you know how wild that is? So we have to believe all of the Bible. He doesn't even have the capability to lie. So it says in the scriptures that the devil is the, fa- the author of lies. He's the father of lies. He speaketh of himself. So this is like, if you want such a great contrast, it says, The Holy Spirit bears witness of himself and it also bears witness of Jesus, right? And so what perversion is and corruption um, is that the devil will distort anything that God does. He'll make a counterfeit. The Holy Spirit speaks of himself and speaks of Jesus. And so what is the contrast? What's the opposite of that? The devil speaks of himself. (laughs) And what is he? He is the father of lies. So when he speaks, um, he only speaks evil, perverse, perverted, evil things, darkness, right? But when God speaks of himself, um, the fruits of the spirit, it is goodness, meekness, gentleness, faithfulness, long-suffering, patience, self-control, love, joy, peace, right? So all of this comes from God because it is God. All this comes from God because that is God. It is not love is God. No, 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 no. It is God is love. It comes from his being. So when he's called Jehovah Jireh, our provider, that's who he is in essence, in his spirit. God is a consuming fire. God is love. God is light. All these scriptures are trying to reveal unto us his essence and his nature and his character. And so the last scriptures to ground us comes from a parable in Luke 18. And this is Jesus speaking, uh, starting with verse one. And he spake a parable unto them to this end, that men ought always to pray and not to faint, saying there was in a city a judge which feared not God, neither regarded man. And there was a widow in that city. And she came unto him saying, Avenge me of my adversary. And he would not for a while, but afterward he said within himself, Though I fear not God nor regard man, yet because this widow troubles me, I will avenge her, lest by her continual coming she weary me. And the Lord said, Hear what the unjust judge saith, and shall not God avenge his own elect? which cry day and night unto him, though he bear long with them. I tell you that he will avenge them speedily. Nevertheless, when the son of man cometh, shall he find faith on the earth. So again, there's a juxtaposition. There is a contrast between the parable character of the unjust judge. He's saying like, hey, this evil character, (laughs) this evil judge, um, even with the continual coming, the wearing of this widow woman did a good thing unto her, even though he did not regard God and he did not regard men and so on and so forth. How much more will your heavenly father, who is not evil, who is not unjust, also avenge his own elect who cry to them day and night, right? But it says he is long suffering again. So God in his sovereignty and his knowledge is like, hey, I'm going to liberate the world. I'm going to deliver heaven, earth, everybody, right? That receives Jesus Christ as Lord. I'm going to set everything in perfect order because this is my plan from the foundations of the earth. Jesus being, his name being God saves. 
He's going to save us. And so anything that befalls us, just like the disciples, the apostles that died pretty gruesome deaths, we know that this is in his plan. If we are part of the ones who die in Christ, right, or we live in Christ, all of it is gain. All of it is the same. First, the dead in Christ were raised, and then the, those who come back um, in Jesus' second coming and are alive, boom, it's all the same. So last scripture to ground us is 2 Peter 3 and 9. The Lord is not slack concerning his promise, as some men count slackness. He's not slow, but is long-suffering, patient towards us, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. And so this is the gospel of Jesus Christ, that you repent, that you return to God through Jesus Christ. You hate your sin. Um, you confess your sins because God is just to cleanse us from all unrighteousness if we confess, right? And so this is all we have, and this is our prayer. And so um, I just want to pray this prayer that, hey, if you have been revealed by his scripture that you have thought God is evil. Like there's some darkness in him. There's some evil. There's some capability of lying in him that we just repent. We have a renewed mind. That's repentance to change your mind on God. The scriptures. I must believe the scriptures no matter what is happening in my life, no matter what is happening in my mind and my unbelief or my fear. And even us repenting of fear of that emotion because God has not given us the spirit of fear, but a power of love, of a sound mind. It says in his word that a double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. He should expect nothing of God. To be double-minded in the Hebrew and the Greek means to be dual soul, to have two souls, right? Two personalities. We should be steadfast in his word. Um, we should have a sound mind. We should have peace that surpasses all understanding. Because it says in the scripture, um, God will give unto us a, all our need according to his riches of glory. We are carriers of his presence. We are carriers of his Holy Spirit. We are carriers of his glory, right? But it doesn't say needs, plural. It says his need. What, what, what is our need? Our need is Jesus. Jesus is the only thing that we need. And he says, how much more will he not freely give us all of the kingdom, right? And so, um, yeah, I think this is our prayer. So Lord Jesus, we thank you. We thank you that there is no love that has any torment in it. We thank you that there is no um, darkness in love. There's no fear in love. There is no evil in love. Because God is love. There's no evil in God. There's no darkness in God. There's no lying in God. And we thank you that we receive you as our personal Lord and Savior, that we count the cost of following you, Jesus. We thank you, Lord, that we suffer uh, just like Jesus suffered, and we shall reign with you in glory. We thank you that this is your plan, Lord, that all should come to repentance, that none should perish in the fire of hell, Lord, like the devil, like his angels, like demons, um, but we will receive everlasting life. All those who call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. And we confess that Jesus is Lord and believe in our heart that God raised them from the dead. We shall be saved. We shall be delivered from the evil, the evil one. We thank you, God, that the seal of our salvation is the Holy Spirit. We receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit. We receive the baptism of love. We loose blessing. We loose, Lord, um, the spirit of liberty and peace upon everyone under the sound of my voice. We thank you, O oh Lord, that there is no flick affliction. We thank you for the garment of praise, for the spirit of heaviness. We just bind every spirit and every strong man of heaviness and of rejection, of fear, that it will come out by the name of Jesus and go now. The indwelling of your Holy Spirit, we thank you for your promise of everlasting life and life eternal. We thank you. Thank you, God, for the kingdom ruling in us, for our family, for our friends, for our nations, for our country. 
the kingdom of light, the father of lights, where a royal priesthood, a chosen generation, a peculiar people by the father of lights in whom there is no variableness, there is no shadow of turning, but every good gift, every perfect gift cometh from above. Our father, which is in heaven, we thank you, God, that we will soon return to a new heaven, a new earth to be redeemed. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Yo, <laughs> thanks for watching the, the Blessing Report. Um, make sure to like, comment, share, and subscribe on the video. If you want any of the Bible verses, there is a link at theblessingreport.com and also in the description box, a link in our bio. So you can receive the scriptures and um, enter our email list for new Bible studies, right? So if you want to join our Bible study, check out this next video on how you can get every prayer that you ever prayed answered every time.